morning. Welcome to the Crossroads. Let's worship this morning. You give life. You are God. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. John Thornton. I am the pastor of administration and children here at Crossroads and welcome to our first ever online only service. Uh, Hopefully we will not be having too many of these uh, as we naturally we want to gather together in person if in if in person if possible but uh, thankful to the Lord that we have this unique uh, opportunity before us and we believe that this is a good time for families to gather in their homes to worship to worship the Lord Uh, I remember this time last year, we were raising funds so that we could purchase equipment so that we could be able to broadcast live our services online. And so we're thankful for this opportunity that we have. Um, If you are watching on Facebook with us, if you'll just let us know down in the comments section, just let us know if you're watching with us this morning. Uh, We are going to be taking this uh, week to week. More than likely, we will follow the Newton County school system. And we will, uh, if they are closed, then Crossroads more than likely will be closed. But we will let you know via Facebook and email uh, what we plan on doing. For this week, all church activities are closed. And so uh, we do want to let you know this Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we will have a Facebook Live pastor panel discussion. So what we need you to do, that will be at 7 o'clock this Wednesday, this Wednesday night. But what we need you to do is email us your questions that you have about the Bible, any question that you may have pertaining to God's Word, 
email that to us at thecrossroadsfamily at gmail.com. Uh, or you can uh, post it on Facebook as well. We'll answer those questions uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We will also be letting you know if there are any serving opportunities that may come up or any needs that uh, come up in our community or in our church. Uh, we will email those out and let you know what, the, um, what those needs are. Today, we're not going to be taking up an offering, obviously, so I want to point you to our online giving. If you go to our website, which is thecrossroadsfamily.com, at the top, you can click on uh, the button that says online giving. There is a link in there. There is a video for you to watch. It will explain to you how to give online, and so uh, we will invite you to do that as well. But what I want you to do is we're just going to pray for a moment. We're going to pray for our leaders and just for our country our medical personnel. So if you will pray with me this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are. Lord, you are a mighty God. And Lord, you are in control of all things. Lord, you know everything that is going on in this world. And Lord, we may not. Lord, that may give us fear, anxiety. But Lord, we know that we can cast all of our cares upon you, God. Lord, that we can look to you as a source of strength, a source of wisdom during these times, Lord, of uncertainty. But, Lord, we do want to lift up to you, Lord, just the leaders in our country, uh, from our president on down to our state governments, Lord, with uh, Governor Kemp. Lord, just decisions they are going to be making for our country, Lord. We just pray that you would give them wisdom and insight as they uh, make decisions. And, Lord, we also want to pray for um, all medical personnel. Lord, there are many who are putting themselves in harm's way to serve and to take care of others. And, Lord, we just pray that you would just protect them, watch over them. And, Lord, we just pray that this morning as we worship you as a body, Lord, even though we are part, Lord, in, in many ways we are united together, Lord, as we worship you this morning. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name. Good. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us this day. Lord, thank you for your grace and your love in our lives. Thank you, Lord, today as believers, as followers of Jesus, God, that that you drive out all fear from our lives. Lord, thank you that by your grace, uh, you encourage us and you build us and strengthen us. Uh, Lord, these are perilous times. Lord, these are days... Uh, in which we're encountering, encountering circumstances, Lord, that we've never encountered before in our lives. And I ask you, Lord, today to give us wisdom, to give us direction and leadership in our lives. Help us know how to lead our families, to lead our children, uh, to love those around us, uh, Lord, to, to look to you, uh, to build our life upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Lord, we've realized this week how temporary everything else is in this world but how permanent you are. Lord, we've realized that, that you are truly the only rock that we can build our lives upon. And Lord, uh, we thank you for that. We thank you that you've shown us the way through your word, uh, through the Holy Spirit, drawing us into relationship with you, into your kingdom. And we pray today, God, that we would fully and completely trust you, that we would have ears to hear, to listen to your word today, speak to our hearts and change our lives and make us more like Jesus, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want to go back, if we will, back to the book of Romans. Uh, As you know, we have been in a series uh, dealing with the origins, dealing with creation versus evolution over the last several weeks, and it has been an amazing time together. Um, We intended uh, to close uh, that series, to end that Uh, last week and then to open back up into Romans chapter 13 and it just so happens that we are landing here in chapter 13 in such an appropriate uh, chapter and verses uh, to guide us through this time and it is absolutely amazing how appropriate this scripture is for us as a church and so we're going back to our series entitled the obedience of faith um And there is an obedience that comes from saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ in two places at the beginning. At the end of Romans, Paul talks about the obedience of faith. He talks about that uh, the gospel is being known to all nations, becoming known to all nations, leading to the obedience of faith. And so that is what we are hoping for and desiring in our own lives and the lives of those in our church, in our community, that they would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and that they would come to a place where they're transformed and they're coming into a place of supernatural, spirit-led, spirit-filled obedience in their life to the Word of God and to the Savior, Jesus Christ. And so... As we all are here, I'm praying that you would um, just know as a church family that we are um, together, even though we're not present all in this place today, that we are together, that we're praying for you. Please be praying for us and and, uh, are praying that through this time that God would lead us and help us to grow closer to the Lord uh, with the time that God has given us with our families. I hope that this will be a time of worship today as we hear the Word of God. So if you would, uh, open your Bibles and turn to the book of Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. We've spent four months in chapter 12. Um, Kind of amazing that it took us that amount of time to get through, to go through as a church, chapter 12 of Romans. It probably will be four or five weeks in chapter 13, um, but uh, we're going to launch out into it today. 
Romans 13, verse 1, it says, Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And those which exist are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God. And they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid, for it does not bear, for it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of good, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscious sake, for conscience sake. So let's jump into the word of God together. And you can see just reading this text, how appropriate that this is for us today. The first thing I want to share with you is that every, every Christ follower is to be in subjection to governing authorities. Every one of us, every Christ follower is to be in subjection to governing authorities. This is what verse 1 says. Every person is to be in subjection to governing authorities. You know, it's absolutely amazing that the government of our state, the government of our nation, is been declaring a uh, state of emergency, uh, health state of emergency from our governor here in Georgia, and um, quarantining uh, the population. Never in my lifetime, probably in my parents' lifetime, have they ever seen such declaration from our government officials to do certain things, very specific things, to protect us and to, and to guide us as a society and to eliminate, help eliminate uh, this virus from our nation. It is really incredible to see the cooperation of our nation and to see uh, the events and all the things, even us here as a church are cooperating with our government authorities who have asked us. I was on a conference call today, this morning, with the governor, with about a hundred other pastors, as the governor had encouraging us to not meet in public settings, that this is where the virus has been spreading or in, um, in settings where multiple people are gathering. And so, uh, obviously, we do a lot of handshaking and hugging and and, you know, being very close as a church together. And so as we're, as we're experiencing all this unprecedented events, this scripture is going to give us really a lot of direction today. So the governor says quarantine, a pandemic. Um, these are, pandemic is a word you hear in movies. Uh, this is not a word that we really hear in real life, but we're hearing uh, these words in real life. Uh, social distancing, I've never heard that expression really. I don't know if I wasn't paying attention, uh, but I've never really even heard that expression until this week. Um, you know, someone said how quickly this has come upon us. Just a few weeks ago, these things are not even in our minds. The stock market is at 29,000. Uh, so many things are just rocking along. Everything's going uh, hunky-dory for everybody. And then now we're in a quarantine, social distancing pandemic. Uh, Clorox stocks are soaring, Walmart stocks are soaring, but so many other businesses are struggling right now and uh, our economy and so many things are being affected by this event. No toilet paper or Clorox wipes found in Newton County. It's amazing what really becomes important to us in moments like these. I actually saw a guy at Walmart um, yesterday and his cart uh, in his cart was a rotisserie chicken and about 25 bottles of Clorox wipes. Uh, and so I thought, you know, buddy, could you save a few of those for, for some other people? Do you really need 25 bottles of Clorox wipes? But uh, this is kind of where we find ourselves 
uh, as a nation and as a church. But the scripture teaches us to obey the law, to obey the laws of the land, to submit ourselves to governing authorities. And it tells us to be submissive to that. And that is what we should do as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, that we should do our best to follow the laws, do what the law says to do. Uh, if an officer says, stop, uh, police, stop, what should you do? You, sh you should stop. I want to thank, by the way, our, um, we have a skeleton crew of, of workers that are helping us today with our sound crew and others that are presenting all this stuff to you guys. Thank you guys. They're my only amen section here today, but I appreciate those, I appreciate those responses from you guys. But if an officer says stop, you should stop. Um, I know all of us have seen cop shows where, you know, the, they just do exactly opposite of whatever the police officer says to do. They're on the ground. They've got their hands behind their back. They're, they're, you know, they've got handcuffs and there's three officers holding them down and then they're still trying to run away. And you think, what are you going to do? How fast can you run with your hands uh, handcuffed behind your back, buddy? Just give. It's over, man. Stop. Just chill. But really, this is the opposite of the way we should be. As followers of Christ, we are to respond to authority. We are to appreciate authority. We are to thank them and appreciate them. And honestly, it would probably go very well for you if you will just say when the officer comes to the window of your car because you've been breaking the law, you just say, thank you, officer, for everything that you do. I appreciate you. You know, you run into danger for us. You know, you might... Go, it might go well for you to just show your appreciation for authority in your life. All authorities. First Peter 2, 13 through 15 says, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God that by doing right, you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Our governing authorities, you know, I've been pretty rough on those in our government with naturalistic views of origins and evolutions lately. Um, I've been kind of hard on them, especially with those who have godless ideas. But you know, now is the time for us to pray for them and to thank them and to really appreciate them. You know, today we've, we've heard in, within our county of churches and uh, uh, our county and those who work within our school system pull, pulling together, coming together to make sure that the children in our schools and in our community uh, that are that they do not go hungry and that meals are distributed. We're going to be contacting and sharing with you ways maybe that you can be a part of that here in Newton County. But now is the time to appreciate our government, and to thank them, uh, but also, also to be a voice. Also to be a voice in our world. The separation of church and state is not for the church to, to stay silent, but to speak the words of God, the word of God, the wisdom of God into our community, into our leaders, and to encourage them to follow the principles of the word of God but in these times, too, to let them know that we're praying for them. On the conference call that I had today, the governor was, you could hear it in his voice, was desperate for the pastors and leaders and for our church, churches. He was desperate for us to pray for him. The one thing that they continued to reiterate is that they believed, the governor's office believed in the power of prayer and something that is such a powerful thing this week to find ourselves praying for our leaders. Secondly, this morning is that we should submit to the governing authorities because God has established them. God has established them. Verse 1 again, for there is no authority except from God. There is no authority except, the last part of verse 1, except from God. And those which exist are established by God. God has established an order of authority for us, an order of authority in each of our lives to follow 
in our everyday life. God has established an organizational structure in the world. And I want to encourage you, church, always, always, always look to God's paradigm of authority in your life. Always submit yourself to those that God calls you to submit to. An individual who rebels against an established authority in their life is rebelling against God himself. If we are in rebellion against civil authority, we are actually in rebellion against God himself and bringing civil and or divine judgment upon ourselves. Thirdly, as we walk through this text together in verse 2, resisting authority is resisting God. Resisting authority is resisting God. Look at verse 2. Romans 13 verse 2. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. Authority. Authority is a beautiful word. Authority is a God-given word. Um, for some, some of us, maybe it's a difficult word for you. Maybe you don't like authority. Maybe you struggle with authority in your life. But this is definitely something in the power of the Holy Spirit that you have got to bring yourself in submission to uh, in our lives. We've got to learn how to submit to authority, God-given authority in our life. We are always under authority. All of us, every single one of us, have this organizational structure. We have God-given authorities over us. Number one, we're always under the authority of Christ. Always, for all of us, we're always under His authority. We're always a follower first. Every one of us who might think that we're a leader, we're really a follower first. We are followers of Jesus Christ. He is our leader. He is our authority first. I want to talk about something just real quick because there's a definite difference between an idea about our salvation as being one that we just ask Jesus into our heart versus surrendering our life to Jesus as Lord. I want to encourage you that the Bible never calls us to ask Jesus into our heart. We hear this a lot in Baptist churches. We hear people say, I asked Jesus into my heart when I was this age or that. And, and maybe they mean it to, they, maybe they mean it as though they surrendered their life to Jesus. But guys, this is not a biblical term. You don't find this in the Bible that, that a person is to ask Jesus into their heart. Um, I think a lot of people that maybe have gone through the motions in church where they believe that they're saved, but have actually uh, more or less just kind of added Jesus to their life, added Jesus to all the other gods in their life. You know, whereas sometimes I will ask him to intervene or to have an opinion of some sort in my life. You know what, Jesus, if you would just hang around in case I need you, then I will come to you and ask you for advice. Um, you know, Jesus, what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring you into this, this question in my life or this circumstance in my life. Um, but don't impose your will on me. I, I don't want anybody coming in here telling me what to do or forcing their opinion on me. I want the freedom to do things the way I want to do them. And if I disagree with you, Jesus, then I get to do what I want to do. But listen, I would like for you to make some suggestions. I would like for you to make some recommendations in my life. I believe a lot of people in our culture treat Jesus this way. Jesus, I need you right now, but then I would like for you to go away so that I could enjoy the party. See, the Bible calls us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus Christ. To make Jesus the Lord, the owner, the boss of our life. That means that, Lord, I'm giving my life to you. I'm surrendering my life to you. You lead me. You direct my life. This is not you making suggestions. God, this is you telling me what to do. And specifically, 
from your word, God, give me your commands and give me the power of your spirit to obey your commands. Parents, if, if your kids are there with you today in your home, this would be a perfect day for you to ask your children if they, had, if they have surrendered their lives to the authority of Jesus. Talk about what that means with them today. Ask them. Ask them if they have surrendered. Kids, today would be a great day for you to ask your parents or grandparents if they have given and surrendered their lives to the ownership and lordship and authority of Jesus. Kids, ask your grandma, ask your grandpa today. The time to wonder about my grandparents and whether or not they're in heaven or hell is not at their funeral. Today would be a great day to hear your testimony, to hear the testimony of grandma and grandpa or mom and dad. I encourage you to have ask those questions today. Know where your daddy's going when he dies. Know where your children are going. We are all under submission of, to Jesus and we are all, as members of our church of Crossroads, we have all come under the spiritual authority of our pastors. Every single one of us, even myself, I have come under the authority, under the authority of our six uh, pastors of our church. I submit myself to them, for them to lead my life, for them to speak into my life. I need them. I do not need to be isolated from pastoral authority, pastoral leadership in my life, that I can just go and do what I want to do, that they would help save me from myself, save me from walking and headed off in the wrong direction. We need pastoral authority in our life. I've asked many church members to do many things in response to given situations going on in their lives. Many of them submit and obey the request. I've sat in front of many, many couples in many, many situations where I've asked people and honestly, I have begged them to follow God's commands in a given area of their life. But sometimes people deliberately and directly rebel against that request and that encouragement. Thank the Lord for good pastors in my life who have called me to obedience and protected me and guided my life. Thank the Lord for the humility to obey them. There will come a time in your life as a Christian where you need to obey the spiritual leaders and pastors that God puts in your life. Especially when they're giving you, submitting to you a godly command from Scripture. A pastor's authority is on the Word of God. Not on what he thinks, not on his own philosophy, but on the Word of God. The principles that a godly pastor presents to people in these type situations are godly spiritual principles. Thank the Lord for them. And so, pastors are in authority. Christ is in authority. Wives have submitted themselves to spiritual authority of their husbands. This is a God-given organizational structure. This is not a cultural structure. This is not somewhere we can go out in the world and try to find this uh, spiritual structure. This is a biblical structure, a God-given structure for wives to submit themselves to the spiritual leadership and authority of their husbands to protect them and lead them and to look at them and say, honey, I'm praying for you and I'm going to listen and follow your leadership and your direction in your life. But, but guess what? If you mess up, it's on you, buddy. But I'm going to follow you. I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to have the humility to follow the God-given spiritual leaders in my life. Children to their parents, all of us, Doug and Brenda Stanley are still in authority over my life. I am always to honor them, to listen to them, to respect to them and to stay close to them. Leaving them, dishonoring them 
even if they're not perfect leaders, even if they make a mistake, even if they mess up, and I'm not talking about sinning against me in, an, in a moral way or an ungodly way or an ethical way. I'm talking about if they make a mistake, I'm still supposed to respect them and stay close to them and honor them and listen to them. Now, leaving and cleaving changes the relationship slightly, but there remains always this level of honor, this level of respect for parents. Students to their teachers, employees to their employers. Uh, the whole saying that when the boss is away, the mice will play. It's actually when the cat is away, the mice will play. Uh, I heard a saying, um, when the boss is away, work becomes a holiday. Uh, there's no better vacation than when the boss is on vacation. Um, my boss told me to have a good day, so I went home. Some of these things are uh, not what believers do. This is not how we live. As an employee, we are to submit ourselves, come under the subjection of spiritual authority in our life, of governing authorities in our life, but also as an employee, we come under the authority of our employer. We should be the absolute best employees that there are as believers, as followers of Christ. When I'm working as an FCA chaplain, I'm under the authority of Coach Hawk. I'm under the authority of that team coach at that school. I'm under the authority of that administration, of that school. I have to work within those boundaries, within that framework. I have to submit myself. I'm actually to look to those leaders and say, listen, I need you to lead me. I need you to direct me. I don't want to fly solo. I don't want to just be doing something that I want to do. I want this to flow within your desire and heart for this ministry. We all find ourselves in positions where we submit ourselves to authority. In these settings, we don't take authority. We submit to authority. You know the difference. You know when you look at someone and they are outside of authority. They have, they have removed themselves and they come into a situation and they take charge and they take authority in an organization or a setting where you say, Man, what are you doing this is wrong this is out of order this is out of place it will go much well for you if you understand the environments that you're in and submit yourself accordingly we don't rebel against but respond wholeheartedly to those that God has put in our lives to lead us toward righteousness rebellion against God ordained authority listen rebellion against God ordained authority is rebellion against God those in rebellion will receive, the Bible says here in this verse, will receive condemnation upon themselves. Look at verse 2 again. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed, look, will receive condemnation upon themselves. If you are in rebellion against spiritual authority in your life, you will receive condemnation upon yourself you'll receive punishment and discipline for this sometimes the discipline is a direct consequence of rebelling against spiritual authority whenever someone who God has put in your life as an authority advises you or asks you to do something and you rebel against their direction God's word tells us God's word tells us that you are going to receive condemnation for that or discipline as a believer. It's just a simple game of follow the leader. Know who the leaders are in your life and follow their leadership. It's pretty simple. But oh, so hard it is. And oh, how we, in, a, in this world today, in this culture today, how hard it is to find people who understand God's paradigm of leadership and authority. Number four, do what is good and you will have no fear. Look at verse three. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do you want to have no fear? This is what Paul's saying. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good. And you will have praise from the same. 
for it is a minister of God to you for good. Those who obey the law should have no fear of the law. What is fear? If you're in rebellion against godly authority, you will fear and you should fear. Some people live in constant fear. Uh, in our day today, in our culture today, you see people that are overcome and overwhelmed with fear, terror, paranoia, anxiety, directly because they know that they're guilty. They are running, they are hiding, they are suffering in the consequences of their rebellion. And the only option for us, for them, is to repent and submit ourselves to God and the godly authorities he has put in our life. Look at 1 John 4, 16 through 19. It says this, We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him for this. Love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in the world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Rebellion is the absence of love and rebellion leads to fear in our life. Number five, and lastly, be in subjection for conscience sake. Be in subjection for conscience sake. The joy and the peace of having a clear conscience. This is how we respond to authority. If we respond properly to authority in our life, it will lead us to a clear conscience. Look at verse 4. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. For it, the government, does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of good, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. The Bible here tells us that civil leaders are ministers of God. Those who carry the sword, and in our case, police officers, who no longer carry a sword, but carry a 40 caliber Glock or something to that effect, are ministers of God. This is what the scripture teaches. Governmental force, properly used, helps prevent tyranny, and execute justice. It brings punishment on the wrongdoer. It is a tremendous blessing in our lives for people, for police officers, bringing God's wrath on the one who practices evil. If you're right with God and man, then you will have no fear. If you are doing evil against God and man, you should be afraid, is what the Bible is teaching. A Christian really has then two reasons to be submissive to civil authorities in their life and ultimately to godly authorities in our life. It is to avoid possible punishment and to live with a free and clear conscience. He says, but also for conscious conscience sake. What a powerful thing to have, a clear conscience. I'm going to ask Stephen to come on up here. And Anna, they're going to get ready to lead us in another song in a moment as I I, I describe this. Conscience is particularly a knowing of oneself. Listen to this real quick. Please catch this. If you don't catch anything this morning, I want you to catch this. Conscience. What is conscience? It It is the knowing of oneself. And hence, conscience, it is that faculty of the soul which distinguishes between right and wrong and prompts us to choose right and turn away from wrong, okay? And so, if that's what conscience is, what is a clear conscience? A clear conscience is that we know ourselves, right? We know ourselves, 
And we know if we're doing right or wrong. We know it. We know if we're not in right relationship with God. We know if we're not in right relationship with our husband, with our wife, with our pastor, with our parents, with leaders in our life, with our, with our employers, with people. We know if we're out of alignment. If your conscience is clear, it means that there is nothing to hide or be ashamed of. Before God and before man, there is nothing to hide from. It is a place in life where we can say, God, I know that you see everything. And God, I thank you for your grace today. And I thank you, God, that you love me. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus. And I thank you that I'm right with you today. It also says, God, thank you that I'm submitting and I, the humility that you've given me to submit myself to people in leadership in my life. It means to have a clear conscience that you're safe, that you're free. It means that you're safe. Listen to me, church, today. It means that you're safe. There is no, there is not an amount of money in all the world that could pay for that could purchase, if you are today living with a clear conscience and you would say, I am safe today, I am free today because of the blood of Jesus Christ, then you are a blessed person. You see, being, having a clear conscience, it means that you are in right relationship with God. With your spouse, with your children, with your fellow man. Those who are panicking right now. If you're here and maybe, maybe you're feeling panic, maybe you're feeling fear, maybe you're feeling anxiety today. Ask yourself this question. Is that because your conscience is not clear? Is it because you're not safe? and right with God today. There are people who are scared today, and many are scared because they know that they are guilty. The reality is, is that all of us are guilty. They are scared of dying. Many are scared of eternity. They are frightened today more than they've ever been in their entire life. They hear words like uh, social uh, distancing and they hear things like pandemic and other things and they are scared out of their minds they are scared of eternity they are scared of being buried in the ground they are scared of their body being burned scared of what's next scared of going in the ground and being dead listen as a follower of Jesus Christ as a believer we are not afraid and what Paul says to live is Christ and to die is gain. As a follower and believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's peace and there's rest and there's safety because we know that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Here's the good news today. Maybe that's you. Maybe you have found yourself in a place where you are scared out of your mind. I want you to know that you can be forgiven that you can be changed, that you can be healed, and that you can be adopted as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God. And if that sounds good to you today, I want you to just to pray with me. Let's pray together. Let's submit ourselves today. But most of all, let's submit ourselves to the ownership and lordship of Christ. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we come to you today. We come to you as Christians. We come to you as a church. There are those, God, that may be watching today that are coming. And God, they are scared. More, Lord, they're afraid about eternity. And Father, I just come to you today and I ask you, Lord, God, by your grace to reach out and to, to bring rest, to bring safety, bring encouragement to those who are watching today.
Father, if there's someone that's watching that is scared, that is, God, afraid, maybe they're afraid of dying, they're afraid of all of these things, this sickness, the corona, everything else that's going on around us. Maybe they're afraid of their business or they're afraid of their job and not getting hours this week and, and so many things, God, that they're, they're anxious about or afraid of today. God, I pray today that they would find a refuge and find rest with you. And God, we just want to come to you right now and submit ourselves to you. Submit ourselves to each other as a body of Christ. Submit ourselves to the spiritual leaders, to our husbands, to our employers, to uh, our, our uh, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ as we submit ourselves one to another. God, we come to you today, God, most of all, and just say, God, lead our life. We give our lives to you. Father, for some today, God, I pray that today would be the day that they fully and completely surrender their lives to the Lord of Jesus Christ in their life. Bless them, Lord. Heal them. Forgive them. Adopt them as your children. And if that's you this morning, if you are not in right relationship with God, I encourage you to just pray with me right now. Dear Jesus, I come to you today and I submit my life to your authority, to your ownership and leadership in my life. I give my life to you. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you've risen from the dead. And I ask you to save me. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to adopt me as your child. God, I ask you to heal my life. I ask you, God, to give me the peace and safety that I need today, God, to know that I am right with you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins and raising from the dead. And I give my life to you today. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And I hope today that you know that it's in Jesus Christ that we build our life. Amen. 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 Guys, we want to close out with one last song. And it's a song we sang a few months ago. And I think it's very appropriate. Um, because there ain't no grave that's going to hold us down. There ain't no grave that's going to hold us down. I think this is a Johnny Cash song. I'm not sure who wrote the song. If I'm giving the wrong credit, then sorry about that. But um, as we sing this, I hope that you'll listen to this. Stephen and Anna sing this song. I hope this gives you encouragement today. Uh, not to think that, that you're going to somehow succumb to the coronavirus, but that every one of us, guys, 100% of us, unless Jesus comes in the clouds, we are going through the grave. We are, we, are, we are going, at some point in this, in this life, we are going to die. But the reality is, if you're in Christ, folks, that is just the beginning of our eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. And we know that he loves us and that he has made a place for us forever and ever and ever. So let's sing this song together. God bless you, church. We hope that you have a wonderful Sunday afternoon with your family. Enjoy your family time. And we just want to tell you we love you. If you need us, reach out to us. Let us know on Facebook. Let us know through email. Call us if we can help you because we love you, church family. And we will hopefully be gathering together really, really soon. Amen. Stephen, come on, buddy. Y'all lead us. Anna.
There ain't no 